Hi, I'm Angie Everhart, and welcome to On Air with Angie Everhart. That is a me. Mm -hmm. And this week, I want to thank you so much because we are here with the beautiful and talented Janique Bennett. Yay. How are you? Thank you so much for coming on the show. Well, thank you so much for having me. You're gorgeous. Look at the hair. <laughs> like, you have more hair than I do. <laughs> this beautiful mane. Well, thank you. You're welcome. It's nice to, I you know, some women are intimidated by beautiful women and i just i could fill my house with beautiful women beautiful men i'm not intimidated by by that at all i think i think well i think everybody's beautiful i mean oh, yeah. I, i'm just a i'm a lover not a fighter yeah <laughs> i think that's when it comes to beauty i think it's also in the eye of the beholder anyway because yes. a lot of people once they somebody says oh you're beautiful a lot, a lot of times a lot of women don't feel that way about themselves anyway so mm. for somebody else it's beautiful to tell them that you're like <gasps> thank you <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> well it's a, it's about the person who says it and if it's genuine yeah you know i was married to somebody who never told me oh, wow. that i was pretty ever oh, wow. and and the justification was everybody tells you you're pretty so why should i have to tell you you're pretty which it's the exact opposite yeah right you that's the one person you want to hear it from. Exactly. And when you don't hear it, it's like. Yeah, you're like, look, I married you. And yeah. half of the reason why is because we have this connection. And if I'm not feeling great about myself, sometimes even though you should be the person to make yourself feel good, mm. you kind of lean on that other person to make you feel good. Oh, especially, <laughs> especially in the entertainment business. Yeah. Right. Because mm -hmm. you're an actress and a model and and doing all kinds of things in the entertainment entertainment business is hard in general yeah being a woman in the entertainment business is even harder oh yeah because mm -hmm. we're not paid as much mm -hmm. uh except if you're a model models get paid more than oh. men than men in the business mm -hmm. but so i'd love to like talk about entertainment and women in entertainment because it's a big topic in hollywood right now the big the me too movement yeah is uh, are you a feminist? No. I mean, I'm feminine. <laughs> <laughs> you ask some of the people I work with, because uh, I do like martial arts and stuff too sometimes. And they'll be like, sometimes I'll be like, I'm so hardcore. And they'll be like, no, you're still a girl. <laughs> no, but that is hardcore. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, even though, because, mm -hmm. you know, like one of my mottos is live like a man, love like a woman. Yeah. <laughs> so you can relate to that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I want to do martial arts and jump out of planes and shoot guns and and live life to the fullest like a lot of men get to do and they think oh women just really need to be in the kitchen well that's just not the case i mean i'll be in the kitchen but you know i'm gonna have to like pick up some stuff and i'm gonna have to twirl it around i'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to knock somebody out <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, can we write that in the script <laughs> you need to be a su superhero uh, yeah yeah i'm uh, actually i uh, um i had like I'm, I'm working with a couple people who um i'm like hey look i'm trying to be the female john wick i'm like we got to get this going so i was like i'm gonna start taking some classes i'm gonna start you know trying to get it because i uh, we're gonna we're gonna make it happen <laughs> love that <laughs> i love that i, I mean you can't it, you can make that happen because you can write anything that you want yeah and that's the thing about hollywood and there's so many content there's so much content that is needed now because yeah. there's so many different ways to post things mm -hmm. and I mean, one of the reasons I started this was to do something better than and, and positive, put something positive out because I just felt like for women in in this media, yeah, a lot of things were getting negative, mm -hmm. and I wanted to do something positive, yeah, and bring out and bring people on like yourself and talk about you know everyday things and everyday people that aren't everyday, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. And because, I mean, not every woman wants to be a martial artist and a superhero and, no. and, and, and do what you do. Yeah. But some do, and they can learn from what you've learned. Yeah. And I mean, and also, it's one of those things also whenever, like you were just saying, with not everybody wants to, and, but it's also seeing yourself on the screen as a young lady, and you're like, oh, I want to grow up to do that. Or I didn't think that that was possible, like to look on the screen and say, oh, you know what? I i can do that like i'm a girly girl uh -huh. but when it comes to like actually having to do some stuff like i'll i'll do my little move 
but I'm like, I'm sorry, are you okay? <laughs> 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 and uh, like one of the um, things that we ended up um, filming not too long ago, it was like the my instructor. I ended up getting my instructor in the movie, and um, like she was more of the hardcore mm-hmm. female, and of course I was more of the feminine mm-hmm. hardcore female. And I was like, they was like, oh, we wanted you to be more hardcore. I'm like we already have one that's hardcore. I was like, but I want to see somebody who was more like me mm-hmm. where you can be girly because yes. girly, we we are girly you know you or women have, yeah i mean not saying you don't that have to be hard yeah i mean not saying that she was like super super hard but you know this is what she does so she right it was way more natural for her but um for me to get to the level that she's at i would have to like i would have had to be doing it for, for a lot 20 years. 20 years yeah. and that's what you you know i have you know, my brother is a master in 15 different forms of martial arts mm-hmm. and he's been doing it since I can remember. Yeah. Uh, and he actually trains SWAT teams and real, I mean, real badass. Wow. And he is, you would just not know it by walking him, walking down the street. Although he is, a, he's solid rock. Oh, wow. I mean, you can knock on him in it you know or he's got like a little doorbell Mm -hmm. (laughs) he's solid yeah and but that's a confidence that comes with 25 years of doing it yeah you know rather than you know when we take a course and start you know start from scratch yeah that's one of the coolest things about being an actor Mm -hmm. is that you get to become someone else yeah what is the favorite person? Okay, you want to be a su- superhero. So what's the favorite person that you became so far? Favorite person I became so far? Um, I, I, honestly, I, this is this is going to be weird because I haven't actually got to play this person. It's yet. Something, it's somebody I got to, I just recently auditioned for. And honestly, when I first um, like read the sides and um, I was like, this is so not me. But then once I did it, it was like, I really want to be this person. <laughs> But it was just because it was they were just so like totally opposite. Like I had literally had to like break them down from like right. the top to all the way to the bottom. Nothing of me whatsoever. And I was like, yeah. Where do you start when you break down a character? So that if somebody's out there and they don't understand about acting at all, mm-hmm. where do you start? Um, I mean, it's one you just you read. I read the whole script or not the whole script because usually you just get just sides. get sides and I, I read all the sides I see what their breakdown is for that character mm-hmm. and I'm looking at it I'm like okay so this character is supposed to be let's just say uh, masculine mm-hmm. as I'm not and because that's what the character was she was actually um, I, I call her a stud mm-hmm. <laughs> okay and um, so um, she was she was a masculine and um, reading what she says mm-hmm. is half of the reason why I'm like, okay, she's, she's a stud. And, um, it was just a good stud or just real hardcore. Um, like, no, like, um, like some, somebody's super smart or, um, so, cause I know you're super smart, mm-hmm. but no, no, she's, um, she, cause I know, I know you can't really give out too much stuff when it comes to, to it um so that's how three is only um uh <laughs> but uh, um she was when you know like kind of like um like in the lesbian community mm-hmm. um you have the films the studs and that's what i'm what i mean when i say stud got you yeah and so um she was i mean but it didn't say that she was right but in my the way i i'm picturing her and the way i'm pit, um, like breaking her down i'm looking looking at a dialogue conversation mm-hmm. that's happening between her and the um people and i'm like yeah and i just came up with what i consider to be like her own her own her own, her story. own story yeah and you know it's fa- it's fascinating to break that down do you go okay so then you found her background you mm-hmm. found her family did you yeah. go did you go deep that deep how do you break it down i mean i break it down as far as like i said depending on the dialogue depending on what what's going on mm-hmm. um I, I picture, I, I picture, uh, uh, like basically her whole life, right. like how she is with other people aside from just this, this particular person. I do research on other, like the behavior of how I are other studs mm-hmm. and, um, because, because a lot of it 
would ha- you know they'd have to also be able to agree with you that you okay yeah you you fit you fit <laughs> well you can do so for me mm-hmm. whatever i would do i would do it off of and and when i have a, a you know an audition which i hate doing by the way i, I hate auditions mm-hmm. i really truly hate them um and i always have yeah but uh I take it with by, like sentence by sentence because in each sentence it tells you something about the character. Yeah. And I break it down in, into trying to figure out, you know, who that person is, how they walk, how they talk. Yeah. How they dress, you know, the smells. Yeah. The the whole thing. How many times do you read your sides? Uh a lot. Yeah. I mean, yeah, cuz I was like if you can put a number by it, then you might you might read it read it a couple more times. Cuz that's yeah. that's a lot. You have to read it like I read it so many times. And when I'm also, I also write like per, per, per sentence. I write. All right, this is what do you mean by that? This is even though it's not. I'm not saying it. But this is what's going on through my head. This is what's going through my head. This is what. And then sometimes it changes as mm-hmm. I'm continuing and continuing to develop the character. I'm like, no, no, that's not how that's going. Oh no, 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 no. That's <laughs> that's how why. it goes. Yeah. <laughs> Until it's time. And sometimes to- I'll rewrite the the entire sides just Mm -hmm. as the you know the words over Mm -hmm. just so that it's in my handwriting rather than in print Mm -hmm. and and it becomes mine even more so yeah or hers (laughs) (laughs) hey (laughs) you know i over the years i've had i've played so many different i think i've done 50 movies to this point Mm -hmm. and i've played so many different characters and I really enjoyed this one character that I did. Um, her name was Lilith. Okay. And she was the oldest vampire. Mm-hmm. And granted, it was campy. It was Tales from the Crypt. Mm-hmm. But, <clears throat> and, I, and, I, and I, I literally worked for weeks to bring my voice down. Because mm-hmm. I figured she was in the grave for so long. that she, And it was Lilith. Mm-hmm. And I mean, her voice was so low. Yeah. And I have a low voice anyway. Uh-huh. And the walk and the, you know, just because I wanted her to be yeah. strong. Mm-hmm. And, and you had to carry yourself a certain way when you want to portray a character a certain way. Yeah. When 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 she's like the ultimate of the ultimate vampires and the strength and the uh, the oldest mm-hmm. being brought back, you know, bringing, yeah. you know. So it was, it was a lot of fun. I mean, that one was a lot of fun to do. Yeah. And the prosthetics. Oh yeah. Do you like doing prosthetics? I I, I actually do them. Like I, I will. you make them? Yeah. Wow, you are a woman of all. <laughs> what what kind of prosthetics do you make? I mean, uh, on the last film that I did, I, I, I mean, even though we had um like the gore dolls helping us, um, I ended up doing some of the um special effects makeup uh-huh. and stuff. And um, I mean, even though they they wanted um certain things they the the actual professionals did the big stuff but right. I, as far as like um one movie um that i did where uh, my character had alopecia half the reason why um, i couldn't cut my hair for it was because i was working on other films mm-hmm. but um we ended up having to do the um the ball cap myself at mm-hmm. one time because like we had other people do it but then sometimes it well you know out. how you do you know how to make that probably better than some people would i wouldn't know how to do that mm-hmm. well hey youtube is my friend okay <laughs> oh i do know how to do it now because i've had it done to me uh uh-huh. and you know the wrapping of piece by piece by piece by piece but i'm so bad at doing hair mm-hmm. it's not my forte okay um well well having to straighten your hair getting it straight enough you know that was that was uh i think i um when they actually had to do my hair I, I actually lost a lot of hair for it Oof. and stuff. But like I said, because I was doing multiple projects, mm-hmm. I couldn't really cha- alter my look too much. But for this one, I still lost a lot of hair. But, you know, but doing the prosthetic for that, it um, it came from learning off of YouTube. But then uh, I learned a lot of things off of YouTube. YouTube is your friend. It is my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I, mean, I have like a couple of them where I like um, I... Uh, stuck a pin through my finger or cut my hand and I mean they're just like regular household stuff nothing special I need to go to the um to the store and pick up stuff but yeah I bet you were fun at Halloween <laughs> I um I, I 
I would have been. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I didn't, I didn't do anything for Halloween. No. But I, um, I was telling some of the people, um, like that, um, do a lot of stuff and had a haunted house and stuff. Like, let me know if you need me to do anything. I'm there. <laughs> I love Halloween. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. And, uh, my son was DJ Marshmallow. Oh, wow. Did yeah. you, um, did you set him up or somebody oh, else? Oh, no, in? we did it. He and I went and found light up everything. Um, he had a light up mask. I don't know how, how he even wore it for two seconds. Uh -huh. She couldn't see anything out of it. Mm -hmm. It came off pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, light up gloves, a whole light up coat. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's a few people who actually knew who DJ Marshmallow was, which mm -hmm. he was like, you know it. And then other people that, that were like, oh, the, that is the Marshmallow Man? Mm -hmm. No, DJ Marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but it's also cool because people, if not any, if they didn't know, they got to learn. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, my, my costume this year was a Van Halen t-shirt and a Band-Aid on my forehead. Oh, wow. From what? Um, it's just a Band-Aid. Oh. Like a fan, you oh. know, from the, there's a movie called <laughs> Almost Famous. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I, I was, I was really going to be David Bowie. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the David Bowie, Ziggy Stardust mm -hmm. and my son vetoed it. Oh, he was like, no, no, you can't be that. Mm -hmm. And I think that, I, I think there was something, I don't know why, mm -hmm. but he said, no, I don't, I don't want you to do that, mom. And I don't know if it was just because I embarrassed him or uh -huh. But he was like, he, I mean, adamant about me not being Ziggy, is Ziggy Stardust. There was something about, something He's about like, no, nah, this ain't going to go with my marshmallow outfit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was just like, <laughs> no, it, I, well, I, I don't know why. He just, mm -hmm. he was adamant about it. So women in film, mm -hmm. we, you know, it's a it's a different industry now than it was yeah. before. Mm -hmm. And where am I going with this? This, you know, I th I think that women are stronger now oh, than yeah. ever before. And 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 I and I love I love the fact that that there's more characters out there, and more available for for women because yeah, it, you know, when I first started, there weren't yeah, and. So do you have a favorite role that you've played? Because I don't think you ain't really. Well, no, I mean, not that I've, I mean, every role that uh, I feel like I've gotten a chance to play and actually bring to life, you know, love it. Uh -huh. um, Has there ever been a character that you played that you didn't like? Because I have. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's been a lot of times it's um, when I, ha I felt like I wasn't able to truly connect with that character mm -hmm. and that that's what makes it hard mm. and like because uh, like sometimes the director would be like why are you like you know after the, like it's been done and, and stuff like why are you not as excited i'm like i don't like how i portrayed it mm. like nothing to do with you but i don't like how i ended up portraying what after a while of actually seeing you're like uh, no nah, i feel like i should have done something different you know because sometimes after you've done something mm -hmm. even though they're saying yeah i like that and you're like, okay, I, I trust, I trust you like what, what you're seeing. Then you're like, eh, no, I, I, I didn't connect with right. what I felt should have been with that character. And you know, a lot of times I, I like ADR sessions, mm -hmm. which is the voiceover section yeah. se session afterwards, because sometimes you can just change the way you said something with the tone of voice that can actually you improve your, your performance. Mm -hmm. And, and that's one of my favorite parts of movie making is ADR. And I know a lot of actors hate it. Yes. <laughs> We're in the middle of that now. <laughs> You're in the middle of ADR? Yeah. I love ADR. Mm -hmm. I do. I love it. It's, you know, look at me. I'm in the studio. I like the podcast. I love doing radio. Yeah. I like doing ADR. I really do. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I played this character one time that was a, you know, she beat up her son for being homosexual mm -hmm. and I can't believe I even took the part and I hated doing every second of it because it's oh. so against who I am as a human mm -hmm. that I thought okay I'll do it mm -hmm. because we got to get this word out but yeah they wanted me to do press on it and I just I couldn't 
Yeah. I, you know, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Because it's almost like if I do it, if I did such a good job, then people <laughs> might actually see me that way. Right. But then if I didn't, then they're like, oh, I didn't really feel the feeling the way I should have. I just couldn't. I couldn't even watch it. Oh, wow. Which is really. Even what, for the message that you're putting out? I couldn't even watch it because it was so hard for me to do mm -hmm. that I said to myself after doing that movie, I'll never do that again. Yeah. I'll never do something. And as an actor, you know, that's hard, you know, if you're going to do something. And, but you, for me, it's, I just have to connect. Yeah. And that one, I was so disconnected from it mm -hmm. that it wasn't really true to my, my soul as yeah. a person. Yeah. That it just hurt me so bad. No, no, I guess that's understandable because I mean, even when you end up playing a character that you're like, this is not me, but you still can connect to that person where you're like, yeah, they can do this, 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 and this. And if I do, you know, do it the way it needs to be done. Cause as I tell my mom and dad who are, um, who are in church, mm -hmm. and I said, like, somebody has to play the devil, mm. <laughs> you know, and whoever has to play that character is going to either have to do a really, really good job and tap into some mm -hmm. areas and even though they're not, they're still going to have to, you know, perform in such a way that if it's done right, it's going to be beautiful work. If it's done right, they don't look at you as a person. They look at you as, as that character. Yeah. And you become that character. Yeah. You know, one of my favorite characters I played, I got run over twice by a car. Oh, wow. And played a hooker. Mm -hmm. And it, and it was probably, and it was just probably because of the whole cast and crew. It was so amazing mm -hmm. that it was, a, it was such a good experience and good and bad experience, mm -hmm. you know, but um, it, it I, I just, you know, what actual acting and being on set is so much fun to me. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's the other stuff, mm -hmm. you know, the stalkers and <sighs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> find that as a woman, don't you? Yeah. You know? The, and especially in this industry, it's like if you put yourself out there, I mean, it's not even just in the industry. If you are online and you are a female, mm -hmm. it's like there's a lot of things you have to do to keep that, keep from protecting, or you have to, you know, protect yourself basically. Yes. And some, some people don't realize how much stuff they put of themselves out there as far as the posts that we post where we're going to be mm. pretty much hey i got my new house don't realize that it's not too hard people don't also realize that if you have your location on when you take that picture oh yeah that it <laughs> will let you know exactly. where you are so people pretty much will know where you live right. <laughs> and it, a lot of times people um always or a lot of people feel like it won't happen to me mm. or don't realize that some of the things that we as people do put yourselves in a lot more danger than we actually turn location services off ladies yes. <laughs> turn off your locations and if you do have if you do end up getting an if you like you already know if you go on vacation don't say you're on vacation right now. you're on vacation <laughs> especially after you're like this is my new house and i'm about to go on vacation i'm going to here this is my new house i'm, I'm on vacation so <laughs> and this is where i hide my this is where i hide my key i'm about to walk in the house y'all and i want you to see this is my pin number. <laughs> 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 yes, you got to be very, very careful, especially even with like even with neighbors and like just basically the stuff you post. Get be careful with what you post. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to keeping my smile white, I only trust Oralgen New Pearl Advanced Teeth Whitening System for sensitive teeth. With no harsh chemicals or peroxide, New Pearl offers a unique 99% natural formula that delivers professional results previously only available from your dentist. Save 50% now on the New Pearl 32X Teeth Whitening Kit. Satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Visit oralgen.com slash live with Angie to order now. We were talking about what to do and what not to do before the break. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, you know, I, that was kind of a really rude awakening. I, I got, I had a spot, I had a sponsor. I had a mm -hmm. stalker mm -hmm. when I first started in the movie business. Mm -hmm. And that was, I mean, 
they broke into my house. Oh, wow. And I mean, it was, it was pretty serious twice. Tried one time, tried, did, did the second time. And then, you know, and then I ended up, you know, changing all kinds of things. And so, you didn't know how he found out where you lived? Oh, no, I, I just think this is a person who really wanted, mm -hmm. who, who knew a lot about me and figured it out. You yeah. know, um, this was back before a lot of social media. Oh, wow. So this is a person who really yeah followed me. Because nowadays with social media, you literally give them all the information you need. Mm. And for a couple of dollars, you can pay for it. <laughs> 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 but wow, that's that's crazy. For, what what did say, say that again? A couple of dollars, you can pay for the information on somebody? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. like background checks, you... Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, hey, you you have enough information right. offline. Right. Because, you know, you, you say, um, say you're like, hey, I'm starting my new job at this particular location. Mm -hmm. And then you say, this is where I live. And then you say, this is who my parents and then my siblings and all that other stuff is. And if somebody does a good enough search on you, you pretty much have given them, like, enough information where... If, they can find you. Yeah, because most of the security questions that are out there, they're asking personal information that only you should know. But if you're also not realizing that you are posting that personal information, sometimes they'd be like, what is your first car? And then here you go, a year ago, my first car. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, and if somebody really wanted to end up hacking you, right? half of the reason is... Well, the good part about my generation is that we didn't, we didn't have that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We didn't have social media. We didn't have cell phones. Oh wow. Yeah. You know, I mean imagine that. I remember the very first cell phone. Mm -hmm. I remember when. <laughs> you know, really truly, like the big first cell phones were these big gigantic. Mm -hmm. Like they were this big with an antenna at the top of it, right? Mm -hmm. That looked like something that you would have on a boat now, you know, like one of those, you know, like a satellite phone, like say by the bill. Is that worse? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what cell phones started off as. And mm -hmm. it was fantastic. But I mean, it, I, I kind of lived in a generation of, we got away with, you know, at murder, not yeah. murder, but we got away with, you know, having a lot of fun without people snapping your picture. And these days you just, everything is on yeah. a phone. If somebody gets into a fight, they're like, <laughs> yeah. You're like, nah, I'm not going to help you. I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to make sure that I live to tell your story. <laughs> At, turn your head to the left. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, you know, it can be helpful. Somebody's being crazy on you. You go like this with your cell phone. Yeah. That, that really can. I mean, it, it can save your life at the same time. Or it can really piss them off. Yes. <laughs> it just depends on the person. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> I think the nuttier the person is, the more it'll piss them off. <laughs> yeah. That's why sometimes you got to have it. Got one here and then yours one you're going to see. Okay. I'll put this one away. But the other one's recording. <laughs> right. But, um, you know, I, I, I loved, and I say loved in past tense because it, that was a freedom that it just didn't exist. That doesn't exist today. Yeah. And kids growing up these days are growing up with social media. So, you're saying don't post everything. I, um, well, I, I come from a security background mm -hmm. also. <laughs> mm -hmm. So a lot of it is, you know, to be careful of the stuff you post because if you, you don't realize a lot of the danger that you put in the stuff that you post mm -hmm. and um, the more private and personal stuff that you post, the more, um, Somebody can either pretend that they know you, they can get to your family members, mm -hmm. they can, um, That's they can thought. pretend to be you, you know, especially if they, you know, know enough about you and because of filters, they mm. literally can because <laughs> mm. a lot of people don't look like themselves because of their filters right? and stuff. But, um, yeah. It's because people are making themselves look completely different than what they actually are. And yeah. in the, in the photograph, they're making themselves skinnier. They're making them taller. They're yeah. younger. Yeah. That you don't know. Yeah. And it's like, every, everybody's being, um, everyone, sometimes they're for fun. And then sometimes it's, um, I, you know, don't take a picture of me because I, if it don't have the filter, then, you know, I don't want people to see the real me. And you're like, but this is the real you, you are beautiful. That's why hearing from, 
regular people it's like mm-hmm. hey you are beautiful just the right. way you are right some people don't hear it enough but they would prefer to hear it from a bunch of strangers as opposed to face to face hey you're beautiful yeah well i think that that's that that was one of the reasons that my guy was like well you hear it from strangers all the time yeah but see i don't i don't need it from a stranger i mean yeah. it, it's nice to have a fan say hey you're great but yeah but it doesn't mean as much when i know it from somebody that i know yeah if it's especially somebody somebody you care about somebody that i know and somebody that i care about says wow i think you're beautiful that that touches me and they see you unfiltered they see the good the bad yes everything yes and to have somebody that sees every ounce everything that you don't even put out in the public Mm -hmm. to tell you that you're beautiful and you're like oh you like me just the way i am just the way you are i like you just the way you are oh thank you you do you look down every time I you get a compliment, huh? You like you're you have, because you are gorgeous, like drop dead gorgeous. Oh, thank you. There you go. You do. <laughs> <laughs> you get a compliment. You're like, well, I'm well, even or not even though I'm an actress, I am actually quite shy. Are you? <laughs> yes. But that's like I my, can see that. That's my outlet. My outlet just becoming. Oh, I'm, I'm not me. I'm Trishan. Okay. <laughs> and some people can't do that though. I mean, for a shy person. Mm-hmm. as you you're shy as you yeah but you become somebody else and you're not shy yeah because I'm, i can blame whatever i do on my character <laughs> like i said the way like you said the way she walks the way she talks that's that's not me that's whoever that character is and sometimes you know that's that what that's what makes a great actor is that you can take the shy self the shy self mm-hmm. and become somebody else and not have a problem with that yeah and that's not easy to to mm. do no especially if you're shy yeah very introverted hmm. <laughs> i would never have been able to tell that about you <laughs> <laughs> very very private person you are mm-hmm. which which is nice um it's it it i think that's difficult in this day and age because yeah. it's about how many followers you have mm-hmm. how much you share yeah i was going to i was going to say something about that too say it because um i've had a lot of people who will say you need to share this you need to you need to post more you need to do this because they don't look at how well you can act anymore no they, they don't. look at how many followers you yes, have. yes they do because if you don't have anybody who wants to see you then they're not going to go see a movie that you're in so <laughs> let me tell you there are are casting agents that look at how many followers you have. If you don't have a certain amount of followers, they won't even they won't even look at you as an actor. Yeah. And which is so sad. It is. And it's it's sad that this come to that on mm-hmm. social media that it's not about talent. Yeah. And it's about how many followers you have. Yeah. Cuz I don't know that I would call that a talent. But it I mean it is a talent in itself cuz I know a lot of people who are very talented at coming off a, a certain way and you're like but i know the real you the t- I, I think that's hard work i think it it's is. whether it's talent or not i think it's somebody portraying themselves as something that they're not yeah um that is that is sense, acting. acting yeah it <laughs> is uh you know I, but no yeah no it, yeah yeah but i mean i was i'm i'm one of those i'm also a rebel Mm -hmm. (laughs) so i'm like okay i understand i'm supposed to post a lot i'm supposed to reach out i mean i'm i feel like i'm going to be me regardless Mm -hmm. because no matter how many people i feel follow me or don't follow me um if i talk to a specific person that i do or do not know or like somebody's picture or be like oh my gosh that was great i'm still going to be who i am like i don't want to do that just so that somebody would follow me back Mm -hmm. because i feel like that's that's false advertisement right and i don't want to falsely be like even though i think this picture is like i'm gonna like it so that you'll see that i like like five of your things you'll come and like me back and start following me no 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 but that's half the reason why i also started writing scripts and producing and you know getting my own out so that if you want to see actual talent and somebody who really wants to put stuff out because they're more into the industry than look at me then, right you're yeah. into the art I'm the art of, of it, it. I'm an, into, the art, into of it. the art of it yes and you know that's why I have started my own shows and have my own projects because 
I didn't want to do uh, some of the stuff that was out there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the stuff, granted, I, you know, I, I've been in the business a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, I've played every kind of woman, pos you know, not every kind, but yeah. I've played a lot of different women. Uh, I've never done a period piece. Oh. That's the one thing I have not done that I would love to do because when I watch movies, that's why I love watching yeah. period pieces. So that's one thing I would really love to do. Mm -hmm. uh, Does it matter the period? Because I'm, I'm, I'm one of those who I, I keep telling um, the people I work with, uh, with BR Films. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but I keep telling them <laughs> that um, we... Um, that <laughs> well, I, I could be a period piece. My, you know, depends on how old you are mm -hmm. you know but yes period to me might not be period to like a 15 year old <laughs> well no no i'm saying like do you have a period that you want to i have never done any of them so uh when i was a model we used to do a lot of that as it you know in photographs mm -hmm. so i would do photographs like in period mm -hmm. costumes and yeah. do photographs like that which i loved doing but you want to tell the story with it but i'd love to be i think i lived in the wrong generation in a way because i i just love old school and mm -hmm. i like you know um i like manners yeah and i think in back in the older days there was you know like i don't know i'd like to be a, a french maid or something mm -hmm. like that yeah i mean hey we you now, why, why haven't you done it? Well, I just think that people perceive me as something completely different or have perceived me more as a sexy whatever, take your clothes off, which I won't do anymore. Mm -hmm. And, you know, starting off, because I started off as a supermodel in the business mm -hmm. when models can't act. And that was me coming from the modeling industry into the acting world. So I, it... it I think the timing was off in a way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you are in an industry and the timing just yeah. works and it clicks. And I started probably a little too soon in terms of that. So, you know, I maybe paved a way, mm -hmm. but, you know, I didn't get to do some of the things that I wanted to do. And that's fine. I'm yeah. doing them now. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't I mean, mean I won't do them. I was like, would you do it like, hey, we have something for you tomorrow. Would you do it like, hey. Would sure. You, yeah. If it's a, uh, you know, I'm very, 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 very selective on what I do as an actress now because, yeah. because I've done so much that I would, I'm, I'm very choosy. I think that as actors, we should be choosy though, because not everything is, I mean, sometimes you'd be like, Hey, we want you on there just so we can have you on there. As well, I've had, I've had managers who handed me stuff that I, I said, no, I'm not doing that now. That's not what I want to do. Yeah. And literally like two weeks ago, somebody handed me something and I said, they're like, you're going to be perfect for this. And I'm like, well, yeah, that is not what I want to be on a show doing for the next five years of my life playing this type of person. Mm -hmm. Not what I want to do. So I'm more selective because I, I don't know that. You know, in my 20s, I realized when you have something on a script, mm -hmm. how much more difficult it can be to play in your everyday life. Yeah. Um, a beat up scene, for example, if a mm -hmm. woman is getting hurt. Yeah. And you actually have to shoot that. What you're shooting is getting as close to being hurt as possible. Yeah. And then especially if you can get, feel that emotion. And to feel the emotion of being hurt. Mm -hmm it reads one thing on the paper yeah but when you're in a scene and you're being hurt mm -hmm. you're feeling the pain yeah and that's not fun <laughs> no no i know no, i know Cause i think one time i had a scene where it took me three days to come from that emotion so to come back from that emotion yeah, to come back from that emotion because you felt it yeah so yeah i know i know what you mean and so I'm very selective about what I feel. And, you know, somebody warned me about that, that I shouldn't do a horror movie, mm -hmm. this one particular one. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, because of how it's going to happen, what's, what happens. Yeah. And with that, 
I, I, you know, I, I looked at it again and I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. You see things a lot differently. Yeah. Certain things. Cause I, I think I've had some of those where you're, you audit or you're like, Hey, we want you to audition. And you're like, uh, I'll, I'll audition. And, but so I won't even do that. Well, I'll, I'll audition, but I, and then it, maybe that's wrong of me not to audition. Because well, it's I mean, getting I, yourself out there. Yeah, my, yeah, me, it's still, it's, you know, I'm creating, mm -hmm. but I don't know the whole script for me. So it's like, I'll audition. I'll put my own spin on it. I, the pro, the probability of me booking that particular role, because depending on who is in it, even though you shouldn't go in like that, but you'd be like, well, the probability of me booking and acting opposite of this person for this particular role is probably a little slim. So I mean, I'll audition because then. They'll see me. They'll see you. And maybe think of you some for something else. Yeah. See, that's where I lack in because I just don't want to. I'd rather be doing things that I want to do yeah. than be good at what I'm doing yeah. than go in there half-assed. And and I know that if I'm not going in, I'm not saying that you're going in half that half. Oh, like for, that. Cert, for, for certain. I'm not saying you are. I'm just saying for me, I know that if I go in and I'm not liking, loving the character, that I'm not going to do my best. For certain ones, there's just certain characters that they scream and they say, you know, I'm you. Yes. Make, bring me to life. Yes. You know, and then there's some characters you're like, okay, uh, that's actually me. Crap. <laughs> 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 and then you're kind of like, all right, I'll do it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I'm, I don't, I don't try to have to it. I'll still try to. Right. But it, it just, some of them, they just scream, I've got to, like, put as much of what I feel for this person into In it. it. Because regardless, there have been a couple of characters that I'm like, even though I may not, or I didn't book it, I'm like, oh, you're going to still come to life, but in my project. Mm -hmm. But not the same, but you're going to be coming to life. Well, right now, I'm, I'm advocating for women and women's health and, and my shows are more about you know women and women in industries and women in you know what, what women's interests mm -hmm. and wow my stomach just growled so loud i think you can hear it through the, <laughs> through, through hey, the those microphone are, those are the sound effects okay people <laughs> sound effects <laughs> it just growled so loud uh i i everything i do right now is all about about women you know i just i just think that women need to stick together yeah and that we've been programmed our our biology has been programmed to fight each other for the man mm -hmm. you know to, to fight for our provider yeah and and now women are so strong and they're strong in film and 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 our the whole our whole society has changed and it's making, I think it's demasculating men a little bit. Mm -hmm. And women, are, you know, because women can, we can support ourselves. Yeah. And we can write and we can produce and we can direct and we can be a mom and we can be, you know, we can be smart, smart. <laughs> and I think that, you know, that. I want to see my son grow up in, a, in an era where men aren't afraid of women. Yeah. And I think a lot of the Me Too movement, even though it is a good thing that happened because yeah. I was part of it. Yeah. It's a good thing that people are listening. I just don't like the negative part of the Me oh, Too yeah. movement. Yeah. And, and I think as women, we have to realize that if we take it too far, men are just going to, yeah. you know, back up. And do you see a lot of that here? In the, the Me Too movement, do you do you feel it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, once... The the, the thing is, is, I think for me, it's not necessarily... Um, like, it doesn't... It hasn't affected, like, my jobs or anything. But it has affected, like, a lot of the guys that I know in the industry. Mm -hmm. Where you're like, um, all right. I'm like, I tell them, hey, you got to be careful anyway, regardless. Because you just never know right. what could be... What could be going on with anybody. But um, it's one of those things where th the, somebody's saying the wrong thing and it, 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 it gives a, a bad look. Mm -hmm. And it can, so it can turn it around from being a positive thing to now being 
something right. totally negative. Right. So be as ambiguous as possible. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> be a politician. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know, I just, it's too hard to live your life just n- n- as it is. Well, life is thro- yeah. life throws curveballs, but you know, to have every single woman, I don't know. I just like to help train younger women and do some things in the business that, that are, that are creating friendlier, kinder women Mm -hmm. and men. Yeah. So the men stop doing what they've been doing because now at least they're, they understand that there's a policed women, you know, that there's a line that no is no. And there's a line that you don't cross. Yeah. And, 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 it just, but it goes just respect it's one of those things it goes both ways like correct don't cross that line just don't cross the line and don't don't make it where it's someone also one of those things where you are putting things out that could hinder other women and no matter what you've done in the past you can always change your future exactly so. i always say something that happened years ago if you've been able to um if people change Yes. People grow. Yes. People mature. Yes. So a lot of times, like, you know, you've had instances. I'm not the same Angie as I was in tw- when I was 20. Yeah. Like, at all. We've all had incidents. Thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> if you can go back and say, hey, when you get to this particular age, mm-hmm. these are going to be all the things that you're going to learn. Without those experiences, you probably still, you, w- you wouldn't be who you are today. No, but I didn't have anybody saying that either. Yeah. To me, there was not as much information out there. Nobody was telling but me about some, those things. If somebody did, if somebody did come to you and say, in 20 years, these are all the things that you're going to experience. Do you think that you would experience those things to make you who you are today? If somebody had said that, it would certainly might have made me st- sidestep a little. If they had said, okay, you're going to have this, 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 and this happen. Granted, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm yeah. a very, very strong-willed woman. Yeah. But... You would you would have taken a different approach, maybe, but then you also may not. It have... just depends on who said it to me, though. Yeah, and if I respected that person, then I would have you know had that implanted, and as a, as you know when when people say things and if you can affect them in a positive way, yeah, then yeah. But there's a lot of like what's what do do have in the news or what when people are you know advocating for certain things. Like we're saying, hey, or they're saying, hey, this, 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 and this. But if you don't have, like you said, the right person saying it to you, <laughs> you're going to still do whatever you're going to do. And you're going to become whoever you're going to become. And sometimes those experiences are what makes us who we are and ends, yes. ends up landing us where we are. It's well, what we learn from those experiences. That's all I was trying to say. <laughs> it, you're, you're exactly <laughs> right. Uh, and, and I'll finish it off. I'll finish off our, our interview mm-hmm. with... I had a gall. I had an actual. It was a guy that that gave me this PMA, Angie. Mm-hmm. PMA, positive mental attitude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it was John Schmoltz. He's the pitcher of the Atlanta Braves. Mm-hmm. And I played golf with him, and he said, "Angie, I would hit a golf swing, and if I wouldn't hit it right, it, and I would get upset." He's like, "You can't do anything about it. You already hit it. It's in the past. Positive mental attitude." Yeah. And it still rings, and it rings through. I'd rather be the positive than the negative because yeah. those are two different people there's oh like, yeah so pma everybody pma thank you for joining me <laughs> well thank you for having me <laughs> <laughs>